Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, I just got done putting together about the earthquake they had near Mina, Nevada. USGS originally said it was a magnitude 4.0. Then they upgraded it to a 4.1. Now they're saying it was a 4.2. And they have a moment tensor ball. Here we can see the fault zone. It moved uh, going north east the pressure initial first wave the p wave of the earthquake came from the uh, southwest tension was applied going northwest but you can see how the fault lines um, goes across and moves towards uh, up and to the east northeast we must be constantly reviewing this earthquake are they going to upgrade it again here we have a magnitude 4.3 automatic by the computer, 4.4, 4.5, 4.3. Yeah, I would be surprised if they upgraded again. 4.2, 4.3, 4.2, 4.4, and that's all they have right now. So I'm going to show you what I previously had already all finished until they changed um, this earthquake again amazing that they upgraded it I wouldn't be surprised if they upgraded again because it has here automatic by the computer a 4.5 hi everyone I'm Mary with Mary Greeley news thank you for joining me not too long ago they had an earthquake there uh, along the Walker Lane seismic zone this was originally a magnitude 4.0 but USGS did upgrade it and slightly changed the location of this earthquake to a 4.1. They're saying it was 11.7 kilometers in depth or 7.2 miles below sea level. Here you can see the area of the earthquake. I'll zoom in, but we got Mono Lake over here. And I'll zoom into where that earthquake occurred. Here we go. Okay. And originally, they said it was a 4.0, uh, slightly to the northeast. Now, this is an area of a transform fault zone that runs all the way down to the Salton Sea. Yeah, which joins up to with the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone. A transform fault zone is a fault zone uh, that was created because of the collision of plate boundaries. Besides this fault zone working its way up into Nevada, it also works its way up into southern Oregon. Several scientific papers describe this area as a rift zone, which takes up about 20 to 25 percent of the pressure because of the movement of the Pacific Plate sliding underneath the North American Plate. And I've described how the Pacific Ocean is shrinking as it subsides uh, let's say underneath the Australian plate uh, the North American plate a good example was yesterday's magnitude 7.8 earthquake that occurred up there in Alaska along the Aleutian Islands and then afterwards there was what a magnitude 5.2 I'm just guessing afterwards along the uh, Juan de Fuca fault zone oh that was a 5.4 um, and it was along a section of the Juan de Fuca Fault Zone um, that's been divided into three different sections. But this section where the earthquake occurred was the Explorer Plate. And this is updating as I make this video. Now it's saying that one person reported feeling this earthquake. I'm sure a lot more did. And here's the location of the earthquake. Here's the felt report, which was Los Banos. EMSC has it as a magnitude 4.2, not a 4.1, 16 kilometers in depth. So that would be 9.4 miles below sea level. Um, someone seemed confused about when I state that these earthquakes are measured from sea level. Well, below the ocean, if an earthquake occurred out there in the ocean, um, is the crust of the earth. So this would be about 9.4 miles in depth, or 16 kilometers. Being a rift zone, 
Uh, this is why they've had the, the past volcanic activity in this area. And I've covered about, oh, the last eruption was between 1720 and 1850. That was at Mono Lake. And I've covered uh, the eruptions that occurred. Uh, we've got eruption one uh, that occurred. Let's see if I got anything after that. Oh, that was eruption number four. Okay, eruption one. Okay, which would have been South Dead Man's Flow. And do I have notes on that? And that eruption occurred about 600 years ago. All these occurred basically at the same time. One, two, three, and four. USGS has a paper um, about this area and how after four strong magnitude six earthquakes that rocked the Long Valley area in May of 1980, the USGS detected evidence of renewed volcanic unrest in the region. Because of ground deformation and earthquakes are common precursors to a volcanic eruption, uh, USGS has continued to closely monitor their unrest in this region. Mammoth Mountain, a young volcano at the rim of the Long Valley Caldera, was built by numerous eruptions between 220,000 years ago and 50,000 years ago. Volcanoes in the uh, Mono Inyo Crater volcanic chain, which extend south of Mammoth Mountain to the north of Mono Lake. The pattern of volcanic activity over the past 5,000 years suggests that uh, the next eruption in the Long Valley area will most likely happen somewhere along the Mono Indo uh, Inyo volcanic chain. It also says that eruptions have broken out somewhere along the chain every 250 to 700 years. But there's only a 1% chance of that happening. Well, we are in that time frame where it is due. And I have talked about how uh, because of the movement of the North American plate uh, slowly moving southwest, that more than likely, um, yeah, the same thing is happening here. And it's just my speculation. But we got magma on the move over here where all these earthquakes are occurring. Um, even this magnitude 4.2. I think there's magma moving under the ground. And there is uplift in that area. Other scientists believe that it is a strain of the uh, plates moving, coming from White Mountain to the Mina location. According to USGS, in the last week, there's been 760 earthquakes in this location. I guess, what, it started in May, uh, this earthquake swarm. So we'll just have to see what's going to come next. How many for today? Today, within the last 24 hours, there's been 115 earthquakes in this location. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the, looks like we got a 2.2, which is another one that's one of, oh, 2.3 at Tom's place. Um, what else do we have here? And a 2.7, uh, 13 kilometers east of Mammoth Lakes. 5.8 kilometers in depth, so that would be about 3.6 miles in depth. I wonder if anyone is taking live gas readings from this area. That would be telling a lot um, if there is volcanism currently going on and the earthquakes are um, releasing these gases. Yeah, I wonder if they're doing that. They're probably doing the same thing like they're doing at Yellowstone. Just send people out with bottles, plastic bottles, which have been sterilized to uh, collect the gas. Um, yeah, and to think that we do have the technology to get live gas readings. Um, this would be important to know for this area, I would think. And it's not a new technology to put a machine out to monitor live gas readings. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for subscribing. I'm also on Patreon and I'm also on Twitter. 
um, if you any thoughts, like I said, or if you felt this earthquake, what direction did it come from? How long did it shake? Um, did you have damage from this earthquake? You know, things like that. Um, and I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.